Neighbors, welcome back. Today, uh, I feel like uh, just cooking. You know, there's like a movie scene where the girl's like, all I want to do is just dance. Well, today, all I want to do is just cook. So I'm going to put together a delicious set of panchans, something fried as well, and then we're going to eat it with a nice bowl of rice. So I hope you enjoy this. And if you don't have anything or any ideas of what you want to eat, pick from any three of these dishes. So this first recipe in Korean is called Jinmiche Bokum. If you go to the Korean market in the refrigerator section, you're gonna see dry squid, kind of like beef jerky. I'm gonna use 300 grams. Technically, you could just eat this thing straight. It's not bad. But we're gonna add a delicious Korean marinade to it. And then you can eat it with rice. We're gonna do all 300 grams and then just fill this with water. Soak it in some cold water and basically let it hydrate just a little bit. This process also helps to remove some of the squid smell. The squid smell originally, it's not even strong, but uh, you know, this process does help. After about five minutes, you can just empty the water out. Just give it one more quick rinse under fresh running water. And then the most important part, we're gonna give it a little toss so that we can shake off any excess water. Then a key tip that I learned, we want to mix this with a little bit of mayonnaise and it just takes it to the next level. Not too much. I'm going to put in two tablespoons. This is going to give a nice layer of creaminess and richness that's going to complement the gochujang that we're going to add very soon. Now in a cold frying pan, don't turn on the heat yet. Two tablespoons of water, three tablespoons of gochujang. That's good. One tablespoon of soy sauce, one teaspoon of minced garlic, one tablespoon of sugar, and then one tablespoon of vegetable oil. Now you have permission to turn this on. Could you imagine adding all these sauces? It would have been burnt dough. I want a low heat and then bring the galaxy together. Good, mix everything. Oh, look at that color, it's beautiful. All right guys, once it comes to boil like that, add in our chinmi and use your chopsticks. Wow, now the color's coming together. Get everything well tossed in. Now at the very end, we're gonna add in oligodang or bullyot. This is corn syrup. This panchan is usually very sticky. And to get that stickiness, we use this. Now, I wouldn't recommend using honey here because honey, again, has that floral taste and it's gonna overpower the dish. We're gonna add in two tablespoons and then give it a final toss. And that's it, guys. Woo! This looks delicious. We usually make a lot, put it in the refrigerator and it's gonna turn cold and sticky. Then we usually pry one out and put it on your rice. I'll show you later. But you could taste it while it's hot as well. Oh my gosh. Just put it into a glass Tupperware like this. I'm gonna go true Ajima style. <laughs> put a little bit of sesame seeds and that's it. We're gonna put this in the refrigerator. As it cools down, that bullet or that corn syrup we put at the end, it's gonna make it sticky and then we pull it one apart. Panchan finished. By the way, this panchan lasts a long time, so two to three weeks, you're good. All right, then neighbors, next we're gonna do some tempura. Tempura. The other day we went to a restaurant and they were combining shrimp and eggplant together. Eggplant, seriously, if you deep fry eggplant, it's delicious, one of the best ways to eat eggplant. But shrimp, same thing, so put the two together. Now we've already done a video on shrimp tempura. So today I wanted to show you something new. There's a sauce called tendon sauce. It's like a tendon is like a fried tempura a rice bowl. And the sauce they put on top is very good. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a simple version at home so that you can dip your tempura that we're gonna make. Thank you. Now of course you can eat tempura without the dipping sauce, no problemo. But today we're gonna use some suyu. Suyu. I can't read that kanji, it's too advanced for me. This is a Japanese um, type of sauce. It's basically soy sauce that's mixed with katsuyobushi, that's the dried bonito flakes. And they use this as a broth or a sauce to make tempura dipping sauce for udon and a variety of other dishes. You can make this from scratch, but you can also just buy it at the mart. This has soy sauce, mirin, sake, and then it's mixed with uh, katsuyobushi flakes. And we're gonna need four tablespoons of this. Oops. Oops. Patience, Katie. Patience. That's one. And then uh, four. And you'll smell that like uh, smoky bonito flakes, that fragrance. It's not even cold yet. I can have six bowls of rice with this. Katie can't hold, so we interrupt our second recipe for how to eat. <laughs> Uh, Get a scoop of rice, put some jinmiche on top, and then wrap it up. A little sushi. Katie, mm -hmm. you go do some coating or something. Go away. Then we're going to water that down with three tablespoons of water. That's one. 
and three. Then one tablespoon of sake, or you can use cheongju, which is like the Korean version of sake for cooking. By the way, if you don't have either, you can get by with just using medium as well. It's so one tablespoon in, and then two tablespoons of sugar. This is a sweet soy glaze. Then a few cracks of black pepper. Flame on, bring it to a boil. Move it back and forth, especially the sugar. Move it black. Katie. That's what happens when you're eating too much chinmiche. Wait till it comes to a boil. Alright, once it comes to boil, we're gonna just continue to let it cook away. After about a minute, the alcohol and the sake will have already evaporated. And uh, this is good enough. It's gonna continue to cook in the residual heat too. So we're gonna basically spread the sauce over our tempura and it's gonna give an amazing taste. I'll just give it a little sip. Ah. This is perfect for tempura. All right now, our delicious eggplant. Probably my favorite vegetable to eat adds tempura. It's just delicious. Let's make some big pieces, something like that, all right? Yes, big, non-uniform pieces. All right, then of course, our bubblegum shrimp. You see this uh, pokey thing right here? You don't want that poking on the back of your throat. Just top that off with the scissors, good. Let's take off its shell. I know some people like to use toothpicks and go very gently. I just like to run a knife straight down the middle. You should see that? Out. Now the digestive tract is out. Flip it under to its belly side. You see when it fries, its natural tendency is to go like that. So you can cut at where it bends. Now even if it wants to do a sit up, try it again my friend. It won't. Squeeze so it turns longer. Right? You hear the little pops. Identical shrimp, but now it looks bigger. Get a little bit of salt and a touch of black pepper. Same thing for our eggplant. A little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper on them. Just mix around just a little bit. Then I'm using tempura mix, but if you don't have it, just use all-purpose flour. It works just as good. A few spoonfuls. It's one, two. Mix it up so that it gets a nice coating. Same thing for our shrimp, guys. Be careful, be gentle, but... All right guys, now we're gonna make our tempura mix. Very simple. So that the batter gets a little bit of a golden color, we're gonna start off with the uh, uh, egg yolk. Egg yolk only. Egg yolk in. And then the secret to good tempura is very cold water. So I never use that ice cube maker machine on my refrigerator. And instead, since we want cold water, I froze some water in a mixing bowl. I actually put this in before I started recording. Oh, perfect. We wanna put in two cups of ice cold water. You can use ice cubes, of course. That's one cup. And then since I got a big piece of ice in here, that's around two cups. Let's whisk this up. I'm whisking this egg up first because we don't want to over mix our flour. The more you don't mix that flour and you get clumps, the better the tempura looks. And then one cup of tempura mix, or again, you can use all purpose flour. You just want to push it down so that it gets incorporated into this mix that we have. Don't go like this and stir it. So just get it into the water so that it's mixed. I'm going to briefly place this in the freezer while we heat up our oil. Just drop a little bit. Ah, it's coming up. I think it's good. What we'll do now, we'll get each of our thing in our batter and into into the thing. Ah, 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 ah. If you want to make it look extra flaky, you could get a small spoonful of the batter mix and drop it in. But please be careful. It's only a small amount, about half a spoonful at a time, as the oil will bubble up. Look at it. Now you can see those batter bits sticking to the eggplant. All right, you see those beautiful pieces? <laughs> you want to get these little straggling pieces out because they take heat away from the pot. Wow. Right, it turns much more flaky like that. And there is our eggplant tempura along with the mountain of shrimp. Oh my God. Remember our amazing sauce? Katie, pick up a shrimp. Wow. Yeah. Mm, oh God. <laughs> is it amazing? It's good? Mm. Oh my gosh. Sorry it's guys. It's so good. Okay, take a look at this eggplant. Remember we had it yesterday? Mm. At that restaurant? It's just the sauce. You have the sauce? Nostalgic sauce. It's just amazing. 
We're gonna place this up soon, Katie. By the time you gotta chill out, or it's else we're gonna be gone. It's gonna All right, be and then for our main today, we're gonna mix some kwaligochu in Japanese. That's shishito peppers with some steak. You can work with any piece of meat. Let's do around 300 grams. We're gonna cut this into strips. Ah, it's gonna be so good. Let's get our meat marinating. A little bit of salt, then some black pepper as well, and then just a teaspoon of medium to get rid of any um, beefy smell. And we'll set this aside and move on to a few veggies. Around two large handfuls of shishito peppers. Shishito peppers, known as kwaligochu in Korean, these guys are not that spicy. Of course, they're a little bit more spicy than a bell pepper, but um, yeah, they're not bad. Take off their hats, no hats inside. You gotta take off their entire hat like that. It's good. No worries if you're in a rush and you do like like that, right? It's okay. Just cut them in half. This recipe will only work with shishito peppers. Don't substitute this with jalapeno or anything spicy. You will die. And then we're gonna just use the common button mushroom. This delicious recipe to use them. Just cut them in half or into fourths. Then we're gonna use around six to seven cloves of garlic. We're gonna cut them very thin. All right, and then we'll make our marinade. One tablespoon of soy sauce, two teaspoons of sugar, that's small tea, it's one, two. Then we don't want the sauce to burn, so we're gonna put in two teaspoons of water as well. Second, good. Two teaspoons of mirim, that's one, two. Then one teaspoon of minced ginger. Finally, one tablespoon of minced garlic. Okay, then our sauce is ready, beautiful. All right, let's get our fire on. Then a little bit of oil. Let's get our garlic in. And we're gonna wait till the garlic starts to change color just a little bit. Now we got a little bit of color changing. Beautiful time to introduce our meat, our steak pieces. We can add in our button mushrooms as well. So I can start coloring up. And once most of the red is gone, our garlic pepper. Mix up our sauce. Put them in as well. Woo, the smell is amazing right now. See all that delicious sauce bubbling around? We want that to go into our peppers. Woo. One of our peppers. Absolutely delicious, guys. We'll put our quali, mushroom, and steak stir fry right here as a main. Hit it with a little bit of sesame seeds. Delicious with the bowl of rice. All right, um, and then dinner is served. Wow. wow. Got no more space on the tray, <laughs> so I got a little uh, Japanese portion sized rice. All right, are you guys ready to eat? Yeah. Let's start with my favorite here. Put this on top as I do. Is that the starter? Oh my gosh, it's gonna fall off. No. Yes. Mmm. Tato. Amazing. 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 And then Katie's gonna go in for that steak and shishito peppers. Grab a little bit of both. I grab everything. Wow. Wow. Good luck getting that. I think you gotta put it underneath your, your face. And then of course, like a piece of art. Look at that. Look at that flake action back there. Oh my gosh. Get it into our delicious tendon sauce. In one bite? Oh. This is my favorite part. Oh. I like it cause the batter is not too thick. Yeah. So you can keep having it. Oh, I gotta go in too. You gotta match your shrimp rate. <laughs> All right, if you take a look at the back, it's already dark. The winter is here. The sun's setting around five. Our Saturday is gone. Saturday is gone. But hey. we have Sunday. Oh, we have Sunday. Maybe we cook again or we order some pizza. Yes. <laughs> Tomorrow it's pizza. Pizza day. See you guys. Bye.